All right, guys, let's continue our lecture here for chapter one. And let's see if we can uh, remember how to draw organic molecules. And we're going to talk specifically here about Lewis structures. Remember, Lewis structures show the connection between atoms that form a covalent bond. So our first goal is to come up with a good Lewis structure. Second goal is to come up with um, a shape, like a VSEPR type of a shape. Now, as we go through and do this, there's some guidelines for us and that we need to remember as we go through and um, draw our Lewis structure. So remember, hydrogen can only form one single bond with another element or atom. Remember, that's the duet rule. Now, typically speaking, the central atom usually has the lowest electronegativity. And don't forget that two electrons constitute a single bond. If we have a double bond, then that would be four electrons there. So in, uh, in my little kind of algorithm here, or flow chart, I have a couple things that we can do. So you don't have to do it this way. As long as you can come up with a good Lewis structure, I'm, I'm good to go. But the first thing that we ought to do is we ought to count up our valence electrons. So for this first example, if we look at CO2, we're counting them up. We're looking at the periodic table for this. So carbon has four valence electrons. So four plus six plus six gives us 16 valence electrons. So that's pretty straightforward, right? Now, what do we do when we have cations? So cations have lost an electron. So when we add this up, nitrogen is five. Okay, again, we look at our periodic table for that. And there's four H's, so rather than write plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, I just, I just put a four in there. And then this molecule has lost an electron, so we need to subtract one here. So nine minus one gives us eight, and there we have it. So you know, if we're subtracting for the loss of electron, if we have a negative charge, we have gained an electron. So down here below, nitrogen is five, and then we have six plus six plus six, because there's three oxygens. And then we're gonna add in another valence electron to give us 24 valence electrons. Now, once we've added these things up, we need to arrange the atoms. Now, typically speaking, the least electronegative atom goes in the middle. And when we are done putting them in the middle, so that would mean oxygen, carbon, oxygen, we're going to have to connect them. And we do that by placing one pair of electrons between the two. Well, we draw a line there. So draw a line here. Okay. Now, we have used here, we'll make a note on the side. You've used four electrons. Now we had 16 to begin with. So number four, we need to recalculate that. So we had 16 and we just used four. So minus four valence electrons. So that gives us a total of 12 remaining valence electrons. Okay. Now what do we do with these electrons? Well, we put them on the molecule. Now remember, we can't exceed the number of 16. We have to stay at that number. So. What I like to do is I like to put them on my terminal atoms because those are more electronegative. Remember, least typically goes in the middle um, until I run out of my electrons here. So let's see what we do, or, or till, I should say, until we satisfied the octet on the ends here. So let's go through and do that for that CO2. So we have 12 left, so one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, there we have it. So what we've done here again is we've placed these electrons around the terminal atoms um, to satisfy the octet. And now in this case we're we're out. We don't have any more, right? So here we started off with twelve valence electrons. We just used twelve, so there are none left. Now this is still not our actual Lewis structure. We need to fix this because carbon right here is not complete in its octet. So what I like to do then is take a look at this and then I convert lone pairs on the terminal atom. So convert one or more terminal atom lone pairs into double or triple bonds as necessary. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab, and it doesn't really matter which one, I'm gonna grab a set here and I'm gonna convert it into a multiple bond. So that's going to give us a carbon double bond oxygen. Okay, like this with our lone pairs down here. Now we're still 
short on our carbon atom. We've got six electrons. And we can fix this by taking another lone pair from here, right? Or we could take one from down here. Now, I chose this one for a reason. So when we have this decision to make, we end up getting multiple Lewis structures that are correct. And when that happens, we have this phenomenon called resonance. Now, what you probably learned in general chemistry is you try to make a molecule that's symmetrical. Well, that's, that's generally true. So for this one, I'm just going to grab a second set of lone pairs, and I'm going to convert it over here into a double bond. But we could have made a triple bond on the other side. And we'll talk more about that in a few short lectures. So there we have it, and that indeed is your structure. Now, remember that when we draw the Lewis structure, we're not actually really that concerned with geometry, but you're going to see in OCHEM the same old kind of pattern showing up over and over and over again, where you're just going to be able to draw these things out without even thinking. In fact, in OCHEM, we quickly begin to notice these patterns, and we generally don't count up valence electrons. We just know the pattern. Okay, so in this structure, we would want these atoms here to be as far as away from each other as possible. So this is going to be 180 degrees. So with that 180 degrees, it kind of segues perfectly into our next section, which is VSEPR. All right, okay, so let's take a look at that VSEPR stuff. So remember, it's valence shell electron pair repulsion. It tells us something about molecular geometry and shape. So let's go through this little table down here below. So sometimes this helps students. Um, a is our central atom. So these are our central atoms. X is what we're connected to. These are at the ends, so to speak. And then E are lone pairs. Right, so the simplest structure here is AX2. So here's our central atom A connected to two atoms. Now that connection, it, and this is important, the connection it could be a single bond or it could be a double bond. It doesn't matter. So we're just looking at the number of atoms that we're connected to, not the number of specific bonds to those atoms. So an example of this, we just saw this one, carbon dioxide, right? So CO2 had that Lewis structure. The central atom here is carbon, so that's your A. And it's connected to two oxygens, which are your X's, so it's an AX2. And you're not going to call that an AX4 because it's still only connected to two atoms there. So it's all about these electrons repelling each other. And the farthest away, again, that those oxy oxygens can be from each other is 180 degrees. So AX3. Well, AX3 has the following shape. Here's your central atom A. One, two, three atoms. And that gives us this bond angle of 120 degrees. So an example, an organic example of that would be something like this. Right, so again, here is your A. There's one carbon there. And then here's an atom, an atom, and an atom. So there's three. So AX3 there. And again, remember, you're not counting that carbon-oxygen double bond twice. You're just looking at how many things are circled, how many connections do we have. And here's how we go to a trigonal planar from a linear shape. So we start off linear, put an atom on, and there we have it. All right, next comes an AX2E. So what we're going to do here is we're basically going to take, and this is a, a nice way of thinking about it, we're going to take something that's trigonal planar and we're going to remove one of these atoms and convert it into a lone pair. Right? So still here we see a bond angle of about 120. In fact, it's a little bit less because that lone pair is closer to that atom. So that causes these sides to get pushed down a little bit. So it's 118. It depends on what the substituents are these axes are and stuff. We'll say approximately 120 for, uh, for what we're talking about. 
Now, here's a little video showing how we go from a trigonal planar to a bent shape. So there's your AX3, and there's your AX2E. All right, and an example of that would be something like this. On the, and here, here we're talking about the nitrogen here, guys. So that nitrogen here has a lone pair on it. That's your E, and it has one, two axes. So that's an A, X, two, E. So that gives you a bent shape there. Okay, so now we're coming over here to, uh, to four electron pair groups around the molecule. So an AX4 is a tetrahedral. All right, classic example on here is your carbon atom. So carbon would have, you know, in this case, why don't we put hydrogens on there? Four hydrogens on there. Okay. And then the bond angle of this is going to be uh, about 109.5 degrees. All right, guys, so let's take a look at how we go from an AX3 to an AX4. So Adam coming down, pushing down the three axes that are along the equatorial position. So there we have it. That is our VSEPR shape of a tetrahedral, guys. Now, if we take off one of these atoms and we put a lone pair, it's not going to change the overall um, shape as far as where the axes are. They're still going to stay pushed down. They're going to get pushed down a little bit more because that lone pair is a little bit closer. right? So in GCHEM, there's numbers of 107, for example, in here. Um, but we're just going to call it about 109. That's, that's good enough for what we're going to be dealing with. Um, so an example of this would be, uh, how about something familiar like H3O+. Plus. All right, so that has a positive charge on it. That's going to be trigonal pyramid. Another example of that would be uh, NH3. And here we go from a tetrahedral to a trigonal pyramid shape. Again, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramid. And then bent, we're taking off a second atom from our tetrahedral. So we can take off another one, and then we end up getting this shape. Now, you guys should all recognize this fellow. Water's the classic example of that one. And one last note here about our bond angles for the AX4 type down here. So about 109.5. So this is going to be less than 109.5, this guy. And this is going to be even less than the trigonal pyramid because you have two lone pairs pushing down on both sides. All right, just conceptually that's important to understand.